Welcome back to my React 4 mini series, four ways to manage form state in React. So today is probably the most important of the four parts. So if you're only watching uh, one of the four videos, watch this one. Uh, it's part two, controlled components or the idiomatic React way. So you're gonna learn a lot about how a state is managed in React and also how we can use that to manage our form state. Okay, cool. So um, let's go to our page here. Again, we have this very simple form and nothing happens. Cool, so I've opened this up here. It's a controlled form, looks exactly the same as last time. So now to turn this into a controlled component, we have to keep state somewhere. And one of the requirements as of uh, the time I'm, I'm uh, recording this, this will change in the future, but right now the requirement in React is that if you want to manage a state with your component, it has to be a class type component. So instead of doing this const functional uh, component here, what we have to do is class controlled form extends react dot component and then our component needs a render method and the render method will return exactly what we had before so this is the return of the render method end of the render method end of the component and then of course yes prettier i get it i have a syntax error because i haven't deleted this yet and now we're here. Okay, so this works exactly the same. So we just transformed a functional component into a class-based component, but nothing has changed. If we want to have state, we have to initialize that state in the constructor. So let's build a constructor function. This constructor takes the props as an argument. And whenever we have the props, we need to call super. So the super constructor uh, for the React magic to work in there. Cool, so now that we have a constructor, we can say this.state. So this is our initial state and the state that we can access during um, the life cycle of this form. So let's say, what, what state do we wanna track? We want to track our customer ID. So let's put customer ID here. And customer ID is an empty string in the beginning. Cool, so now that we have that, we have uh, the ability to save state in here, which means that in turn, what we can do is um, catch individual change events on our input component. So let's say on change, we wanna put um, a, a handle input change, let's call it this, and let's make this a class method. In here, of course, we don't have this yet, but then also what we need to do is also put the individual value in here. So this will be whatever the state of customer ID is. Cool, and the React magic will make sure that this is always updated in the background. So cool, so let's check what happens right now. Um, well, no, right now it would, it would fail because we don't have any um, of these two methods. So let's quickly create them, handle input change. Uh, notice that I'm, uh, using an error function here. This is quite important because of the this binding. If you don't know what that means, please let me know in the comments and I'm happy to explain both error functions and how this binding works in JavaScript. And the other one that we need, oh no, it's actually just one. Okay, cool. So we have an empty function here. So let's see what happens. Huh. If you hear from my silent edition mechanical keyboard that I'm typing, but nothing is happening. So that's interesting. So because we have turned this component into a controlled component, right now, this means that we will always only have the value in here that is in our state. But right now, in our handle input change, we don't update the state, so nothing is happening. Okay, so let's fix that. So let's put um, the event in here in this function. And then what we can say is this dot set state and for set state we have to take um, you can either put in a function or an object in this case I think an, an, uh, an object is fine and we want to set customer ID to our event dot target dot value now if you remember in the previous video we had to specify the field here because we used the um, change event or sorry the submit event of the entire form right now we're using the individual event event from um, this field so we can access the value directly. Cool, so let's see what happens. Our form got usable again, cool. 
So what do we gain from this? Right now, really nothing, because if we uh, click the submit button, nothing happens yet. But this is, now that we have this state sort of centrally in our component, what we can do is again, give this form an on submit method. So you can say on submit. And then in here we can put a handle submit. Again, I'll make this a class method here. And then we can have handle submit. And again, an error function, no arguments. So now what we can do is say alert um, this dot state. Maybe let's make it make it a bit prettier this time. Let's say the customer ID is, and then we have this dot state dot customer ID. Cool. So let's see if that works. The customer ID is the best ID. Cool. So it worked. So okay, um, we're not preventing the default behavior here, as you can see. Cool. So prevent default. Cool. So just to make sure we don't get the hard reload again, let's try again. Cool. No more hard reload. Okay. So now you may say, wow, this is a lot of additional effort for basically what is essentially the same as we had in the previous uh, version. And you might be correct, but this is sort of the foundation. We can now build on top of this. We could, for example, have a very, very simple validation. So the simplest validation that you could think of is our button. Um, let's say our button um, should be disabled if the field is empty. So you shouldn't be able to to click this button on um, yeah on on uh, an empty form. And we can very easily do this. So here we could say something like we could create a function that's called is valid, and is valid could just return a boolean, and uh, we could say if this dot state dot customer ID is an empty string, then we're not valid, return false. Otherwise, we can return true. You can, of course, write this much more concise in JavaScript, um, but not if you have an unexpected token this. So handle submit is finishing here. Oh, of course, <laughs> I'm, I'm writing too much Golang in the meantime. Um, of course, the if predicate has to be quoted in JavaScript. Okay, so now we have this, yeah, we can write this much more concise, of course, but that's really not the, the point here. So what we can now say is that our button should be disabled and it should be disabled whenever our form is not valid. So let's do that. And of course, again, this is a class method. So this thought is valid. Cool. So let's check this. Okay, our button. Okay, I didn't put any CSS in here, but at least you can't click it. So you have to trust me that it's that it's disabled. <laughs> and let's put something in, click it again. And now it works. Cool. So now we have a, a sort of very simple, very basic uh, form validation, which with horrible user experience, because you can't even see that you can click the button. Um, but uh, that's of course something to build on top of. Also, I mentioned in the first video that I prepared an error message on, um, on our input component. So we could maybe make use of that now. So let's say um, we could use we could use this is valid method that we already uh, created here. We could use this on um, our input form. So let's say the error message equals, and then we have is valid. Okay. So if our, this is of course, this dot is valid. And if it's valid, our error message should be uh, nothing actually. And if it's invalid, we want to say this field is required. Cool. So let's see what happens. Okay, we don't see any error message. So doesn't seem to be working yet. Oh, this is a function, so we have to call it, of course, uh, because otherwise it's it's always true the. 
There we go. Huh, this field is required. Okay, let's type something and the error message disappears. Cool. So now um, just to, to fix that bad UX that I didn't prepare well, let's go to the CSS for our button. Where do we have it? Button, there you go. And then let's just say button disabled. And then I wanna have background color, let's just say gray here. Cool, so, well, maybe also the, the border. Okay, let's put this to light gray. And let's also say the border color is light gray. Cool, there we go, cool. Now our button is grayed out. We have this field is required. So let's put something in and we can submit it. We don't have the error message anymore. And there you go. There's of course many, many, many ways to improve the UX on that. For example, we could say, why do we start initially with an error message? Like the user hasn't even typed anything in yet. Of course the field is, is erroring, but it might be nice if we only show that message once the user has touched the field. So this is something that you can very easily do with with this form. You can just do it in the exact same way, add additional state, has it been touched yet, yes or no. But we don't have to do this manually. And this is where video three and four come in. So if we wanna say, okay, this is awesome, this is cool, we have so much access to, to everything. If we go back to, to our form here, but it's also very verbose and it's so much to do. And how does this scale? Then we might have to go to uh, our next video. But before we move on to the third video, let's quickly summarize what we learned in this video or not so much what we learned, but what we learned about this particular um, way of managing form state. So what are some advantages? Uh, there are no dependencies really, other than React itself. That of course also applies to part one, but part one, yeah, it's kind of the point uh, of, of not using any uh, React specific feature, so there would not be any dependencies. But still in this case, it's only just React. We don't introduce any, any uh, third party package. It's also the idiomatic React way, I would say. We have full control. We could extend it with any state we want. So for example, I managed the touch state that we could add. And compared to the, the first one, we now have this sort of life access. So it doesn't feel like this old style um, HTML form anymore where we only get feedback once we submit. But as on any key press or whatever uh, change you want, we can have, we can inspect the uh, form state and can do something with it. Disadvantages, it's quite verbose. Also, uh, do we really have to, there's a question mark missing here, do we really have to reinvent the wheel? So um, if you have many forms, you do this over and over again, and uh, that doesn't really feel like what a good programmer would do. We could maybe extract that. But then again, why do we have to do that? If this is a standard problem, maybe someone else has done that already, which is, spoiler alert, what video three and four are about. So another disadvantage is what if our forms grow more complex? So this is a simple form, um, but let's say we wanna validate uh, three or four different uh, things on each field. We have 20 fields, we have maybe dynamic forms. This can be uh, quite difficult to manage this way. So there must be a potentially better way. Nevertheless, when should you use this? I'm not saying never anymore here. Um, I'm saying simple forms with only basic validation. This is a perfect use case. It's the idiomatic React way, and you don't have to introduce third-party dependencies. So this was part two of four. See you in part three soon.